Talking about using the dial calipers, um, when we start using this instrument, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the inner jaws here are clean, uh, clean rag or your, just your fingertips. Any grit on these can throw off the measurements. Then we're going to push it forward and we're going to make sure that it lines up with zero. You can tell here we're about a thousandths off. So these have an adjustment. We loosen this bottom screw, pull the zero in line with the dial indicator, retighten the screw. Now each time we close this, it should return to that zero point. So these measure in a couple of ways. The first thing is we can measure the outer surface of a piece, and that's between these two jaw nibs here. Notice how they're beveled in. We don't want to measure up into the flat area because we can throw the measurements off if the calipers aren't exactly perpendicular to the piece. So to make an outside measurement, we'll just simply apply light pressure and we can see this is exactly one inch, one thousandths. We can do it lengthwise for a longer part. When we're measuring holes, notice this piece has three holes in it. If we want to find the center line of this hole, we don't want to take and measure and guess at the center. What we want to do is first we want to measure the inside diameter of the holes. The back of the dial caliper has these two nibs. These measure inside diameter. So I place these in the hole and pull it out, read the measurement from there. It's measuring from this outer edge to the outer edge. Notice how they're beveled just like the internal jaws. So we first measure the inside diameter of the hole. Then we measure the distance between the hole and one edge. We add the radius to that distance and that will give us the exact center of that hole. Same thing works between two holes. We're going to measure this distance and add the radius of each hole to that measurement and that'll give us an exact measurement instead of trying to eyeball where the center line is. In addition to inside dimensions and outside dimensions, this one is also equipped with a depth indicator. That's this bar off the end and that is used from the tip of this bar to this shoulder here. So this hole has a countersink area. So I can set this against the shoulder on the inside and then slide the shoulder down till it just touches and then read the measurement off the dial indicator or the dial micrometer just like we would with any other of the other two measurements and we should be within a thousandths or so.